My name is Jared Vegi. I'm a doctor of physical therapy, a professor at the University of Southern California, and the author of the international best-selling book, Climb Injury Free. I'm here with Adidas Terex athlete, as well as 5'10 athlete, John Cardwell. And we're talking today about upper body stability and reach while climbing. John, tell us a little bit about that. Well, obviously reach um, for me personally has played an important role in climbing over the years. Um, I'm not the tallest climber by any means, but I have found different ways to utilize my max reach in these big climbing moves in these situations. So for me, it's a very important subject and it doesn't always have to do with how long your arms are per se, but how you're able to use the reach that you already have. Yeah, so we're yeah. gonna go through some specific mm -hmm. tests. Cool. And these tests are going to take a look at when you're on the ground, how far you can actually reach. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna divide that number Great. by <laughs> your arm length. Yeah. So now we're taking out the ape, ape index. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna really see how much you can utilize of your available range mm -hmm. of motion and how that relates to rock climbing. Yeah, sounds great to me. So yeah. we're gonna use this information mm -hmm. to then find exercises that we can use to prevent injuries with rock climbing. Yeah. Should great. we give it a go? Let's do it. In order to perform this test, you'll need to draw a Y on the ground, and the best way to do this is with tape. So take tape, Put your first strip on the ground. It has to be longer than the limb of the athletes that you're testing or the climbers. And then you're gonna make the second part of the Y at a 45 degree angle from the center and the third part of the Y at the 45 degree angle from the center as well. You'll need a pen as well as a tape measure so you can mark and measure how far the climber can reach. So John, we're now gonna go through your upper extremity stability. And this is a test called the Y balance upper extremity stability test. Mm -hmm. So with this test, you're gonna test to see how far you can reach. So mm -hmm. go ahead and get started. You're gonna okay. place your thumb right behind this line and bring it in close towards your palm. You're gonna, in a moment, go into a plank. In the plank position, you want your feet about hips distance apart. Okay. When you do the test, you'll rotate these fingers outwards and mm -hmm. slide them as far as you can down that line and you have three times, three sets to do it. Okay. And with this, the test ends if you put your palm mm -hmm on your left side into the ground, or if you lift either leg. Okay. Go ahead and give your best reach. Go for it, go for it. Nice. So there's one. We've got two more. Get that full reach. Reach, reach, reach. There you go, number two. And then third one. Get maximum reach, we'll take the average of those three. And excellent, take a break. Okay. How was it? Good. <laughs> Tyree, it's, it's, I'm using a lot of force on the right side shoulder. Yeah, you're really yeah. working on that right side. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna advance this and go to the next level. So okay. you're, you're gonna be in the same exact starting position, but you're gonna slide your arm down the second part of the Y. Okay. So go ahead and give that a go. And to clarify my right, my left arm? Yes, you're gonna okay. reach your left arm, right stays the same, and go ahead and we'll do three times. Okay. Get a good reach, and there's one. Reach, 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 reach. Two. And final one. We'll take the average of these three. Excellent. And take a break. Okay. All right, how you doing? Good, I was working harder on that one, actually. Yeah, and you're getting mm -hmm. these different angles. You can almost imagine when you're climbing how mm -hmm. this relates to body positions. Yeah, absolutely. All right, final one. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get over so I'm ready to mark. And this is reaching under? You're gonna reach under, all the way underneath here. Okay. And one. Good job. We got two more. There's two. You're working. Yeah. <laughs> and there's three. And take a break. So first of all, that was a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, right? it was, yeah. Phenomenal mm -hmm. reach, mm -hmm. really good reach. So what we do with this is we also have to then take your limb length. So the length from your spine to your fingertips uh -huh. and divide this number, make a percentage of it based on your actual limb length. Mm -hmm. So that way we can get an exact number. And then we also compare that to the other side and see how well you can reach and stabilize on the other side. Now, very the cool. one thing I like about this, there's so much research on it. It's very standardized. Mm -hmm. The one thing I don't like as much, it's not that climbing specific, 
when we talk about the lower body. Sure. Yeah. So here, the lower body, our legs are straight. Mm -hmm. Our legs are bent when we climb. Mm -hmm. So how would you position yourself if you wanted this to be a little bit more climbing specific? Uh, I think I would probably move my legs in uh -huh. a bit, like I'm crouched and yeah. reaching up towards so the So get in that like position. That. We'll yeah. only do one of them. Okay. And you can see the knees are a little bit underneath the hips. Mm -hmm. Let's say take the arch out of your, or arch your back a little bit, taking the rounding out, keep mm -hmm. that neutral spine. And now go ahead and reach, feet stay, plant, stay planted, get a maximal reach that you can get, and then come back. And what's fascinating, go ahead and take a break. Mm -hmm. What did you feel your right knee doing? It was um, lowering down. It was lowering yeah. down, mm -hmm. and then it was also going out to the side. Mm -hmm. So you were offsetting right. how far you were reaching yeah. with your lower body. And that's what we really do when we climb. Yeah. So another way, you can even let the climbers take their feet off the ground mm -hmm. and flag in this position. Right. There's plenty of ways to assess. This is a nice way to assess your upper body stability with reaching. So the quality of the motion is as important, if not more important, than the actual amount that you can reach. So I want to show you guys one thing, how to do this a good way with good shoulder blade stability and how to do this uh, a bad way where maybe you're cheating or compensating. So John, go ahead and take your shirt off so we can see your shoulder blades. And we're gonna line up in that same position. Yeah. So you're gonna have your thumb there and go into that plank position. And I want you to go ahead and reach all the way to the side. And what you'll notice, pause right there and then come on back. Midway through that reach, you'll start to see the shoulder blade wing a little bit away from the spine. I'm gonna pause you halfway through so we can see that. Okay. So go ahead and do that one more time. Go ahead and reach over, pause there. You can see the shoulder blade is starting to wing. Now go ahead, come out of that position. So this is the hard part. So the shoulder blade is starting to peel away from the spine. What you're gonna to need to do on that right side, you're not gonna be able to go as far. Mm -hmm. You're gonna to have to push your arms through the ground. Almost take your shoulder and press it forward. Okay. But a common error is when people do that, they'll start to round their spine. Uh -huh. So just keep a tall posture as you push your arm through. Okay. And this one's quite hard. I'm gonna pause you as you go. So go ahead and reach, reach, pause. Now push through higher there, a little arch in your back, and that's it. Take a break. <laughs> How was Definitely it? Definitely harder. Yeah. It definitely makes it more challenging and it may limit how far you go, but we want to be able to visualize that shoulder staying nice and stable. So in order to perform the upper extremity Y balance test, which is a measure of how much you can use your ape index, we're going to measure from the base of your neck to the tip of your finger. So go okay. ahead and turn around in this position. All right. We're going to find C7 on the back of the neck, so this prominent vertebra. Bring your arm out to the side so your hand is in line with your shoulder. I'm gonna make a measurement from that C7 to the tip of the finger. And that's gonna be 33 inches. So this oh. is gonna be a number that we're gonna use after we get your reach to then normalize this for your ape index. So John, we took your mm -hmm. reach, and this was your medial reach, mm -hmm. and you got 47 inches on average. Okay. Then we took your measurement from your spine to your fingertips, and we got 33 inches. Mm -hmm. So we take 47, divide by 33, high level math, 1.4. 1. 1.4, 1. yeah. yeah, so 1.4. <laughs> so ape yeah. index now is uh -huh. taken into account. So uh -huh. what this means is your medial reach number is 1.4. Okay. And you can compare that to someone mm -hmm. who has a longer arm wingspan, a shorter wingspan, and that ratio and that number is gonna be the same. Right. And you can also mm -hmm. compare that to your opposite side. Mm -hmm. So how did you do so well? Because average is about 0.9, mm -hmm. and you got 1.4. How do you do so well with this? You know, I don't think I consciously work towards um, strengthening my body for that specific reason, but over the years, I started implementing ring exercises, um, kind of gymnastic style workouts to strengthen my shoulders so that I could prevent injuries and um, things like that, just to o improve overall strength in my shoulders. And I guess in turn, that has actually improved my ability to reach out wide and stay stable while being wide. Yeah, so, that probably I, translates to the rock wall as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's all, it's, most of the exercises that I do day-to-day -day training are all uh, climbing specific. I'm doing them for climbing, for sure. So, well, that really yeah. shows. So we have that medial reach. Mm -hmm. We can do that same calculation for mm -hmm. those other two reaches. And we can also do a composite where right. we add all those together. Mm -hmm. And then we times your length of your arm by three. 
divide those two, mm -hmm. and that gives you a composite reach. So you have one number that shows your ability. Right. But so for all of you, that yeah. higher level math, we'll have that on the screen right here if you want to see that. And compare yourself. See if you can beat John with this upper extremity <laughs> functional reach test for Y balance. Nice yeah. job. Right with on. That. Cool.